This video demonstrates how to create an approval route system with Google Forms. There are a number of reasons you, should, you could use an approval route system um, in Google Forms. In my school district, we use it for professional development requests, but this also could be something used for office referrals, maintenance requests, or technology requests. To get started, let's go ahead and head on over to a Google Form I just created. So this form is going to require us to have several pages in our form. Each page break will direct the person who's filling it out to a different page based on their response to a question. So the first thing we need to do when we get started with this form is to have an opening question that will direct us to a new page. So in this case, in the context of um, a professional development request, our first item on here will ask whether you're applying to attend PD or you're approving PD. And from there, that'll move us on either to the request that the applicant will fill out or the um, approval route. So let's go ahead and create that multiple choice question first. Once I've added this first item, I have to go ahead and add two more pages to my form. First, so to add a page, I'm gonna click the arrow to the right of the add item button. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click page break. That'll add a new page. There'll be page two of two. And I'll go ahead and give this page a title and we'll call it approval type and hit done. So once I'm on here, anyone who clicks I'm an administrator will be redirected to page two. So now I'm gonna edit this question and I'm gonna check go to page based on answer. And we'll go ahead and say page two, approval type and hit done. So on this page, we need to create another multiple choice question that has all of our different approval types, whether it's building, district, etc. So I went ahead and put in a couple options in this multiple choice question for approval types, and then I'll go ahead again and check go to page based on answer. And as we start building out these pages, we'll assign each answer a page to go to. So I'll go ahead and hit done. And now I'm going to go ahead and add another page break. And from here, I'm, this next page will be for applicants applying to attend PD. So I'll go ahead and hit the add item and add page break. And this one will be called PD request information. Click done. And then I can go ahead and start adding questions for name, email address, etc. It is very important that you have a spot for email address because without an email address, then we won't be able to do the back end of this and set up email responses for all of our different approval routes. So we'll go ahead and ask for uh, last name. Then we'll do another question, duplicate that for first name. Duplicate it again for email address. And I can go ahead and continue adding the items that I need to know, whether it's the event name or the location, the date, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you use on your PD request form. So while I'm doing that, I need to come up back to this first question and say that if you click, I'm applying to attend professional development, you'll go to page three, PD request information. So you'll go ahead and continue this process. This page is for the request information, but now I wanna go ahead and take a look at some of the approval type pages. So I'm just gonna build one of these out and you'll kind of be able to get the idea from there. So we're gonna make a new page and it's gonna be the building level approval. So I'll go ahead and at the bottom here, say add item and new page and we'll title it building level approval. And we're going to throw a couple questions in here that the approval will need. We'll need the approver's first and last name. And we'll need their email address. We'll need an approval decision, whether it's approved or denied. And then I also put a denial explanation. So if someone denies a request, they can fill out why, and it'll shoot an automatic email back to the person who applied. And then the last thing we'll need to include is a building approval password. So I'm going to go build out those questions, and then I'll show you how the password works. 
So here I am in the section called building approval password. So each level on the approval route will need its own approval password so that someone can't click in there and just approve their own professional development request. To set an approval password, what I'm going to do, I'll make this a text question, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a required question so that anyone who makes their way to this page has to put a response in. And then I'll go ahead and click Advanced Settings, and I'll check Data Validation. And here where it says Number, I'm going to change that to Text, and then I'll say it has to contain, and then whatever password I want to set. So for this tutorial, I'll just say password. And you can even go ahead and insert a custom error text. When you're doing these approval passwords in Google Forms, it's important to keep in mind that the passwords are not case sensitive. So if the word is password, I can have all caps or all lowercase. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit, and hit done. Once I've finished the any approval page, I need to go to the top of that page and see where it says continue to next page. After someone gives their approval, they're finished with the form. So instead of hitting continue to next page, I'm going to go ahead and hit submit form. So after someone gives their approval, their option is to submit, not to continue with the form. And we'll do the same thing at the end of the PD request information. Instead of continue to next page, we'll hit submit form as there as well once the applicant is done with their whole thing. We have ours split into request information and financial information on two separate pages, but if you do it all on one, you'll hit this submit at the end. So once I've done this, I'm going to come back all the way up to that second question on approval type. And I'm going to edit that question. And if they check building level approval, I'm going to go, where do I want them to go? Page 4, building level approval. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue creating pages on this form for each route in the approval process. And I'm going to make a new page for each one. I'm going to go ahead and include these same questions, approver's name, Approver's email, approved or denied, building denial explanation, and building an approval password. The only person who won't have that approve or deny is purchase order generation. And that person will just have a spot to put a, a, a purchase order number, purchase order amount, and um, the date. So then that can generate the final form. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what this will look like when someone goes to fill it out. So I'll go ahead and view the live form. And on the first page, we see I'm applying to attend or I'm approving. So let's see if I hit I'm applying to attend and hit continue. That should take me to the request information. And obviously, we only put three questions in here, but you would have the entire um, set of questions. And when I hit continue, that'll take me to the next page of the request process, which will be for financial information. Then we'll be able to submit the form from there. Moving, if I go back and I click I'm an administrator and hit continue, that'll take me to the administrator page where I then say what type of approval I'm giving, and hit continue again. And then it'll give me my approval process, and I'll be able to click finish, or submit. So this is the end of part one of this video. Um, the next step will take you inside the Google Sheet, and we'll take a look at how to set up the formula for automatic email responses.